Big weather pattern changes are on the way this week, as I talked about in my last video, with some warm-ups, but also some cool-downs, which are much needed for many spots in the east, but we also have rounds of severe thunderstorms that are going to lead the fronts on through. This video has a breakdown of what to expect with the active pattern ahead, plus everything else in the USA's weather, right here. One Nation Weather Thanks so much for joining me in this video as always. Don't forget that the model maps that I use throughout these videos are from Weatherbell, so you can check out their free trial link to get the same maps right down there for predicting the weather in the description. Also, if you're new to the channel, just that quick friendly reminder that I do at the start of every video to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel if you want more consistent, accurate, and easy to understand videos in the future after this one. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the future radar here with our European model to give you a look at what we've got going on with that active pattern that's on the way this week. And we're going to start out as we head towards the back half of our weekend here. It's Saturday as I film this in the late evening. Here we go towards our Sunday, June 23rd of 2024. And you can see we've got a counterclockwise spin going on there near Maine. That is a low pressure system with that attached boundary I just drew out. That's going to stretch from parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, all the way on down there towards Arkansas. This is a cold front and the interaction of a little bit of cooler air behind it and some warmer air out ahead of it will spark some severe storms, especially where you see some of those deeper greens starting in around Pennsylvania, coming out of Ohio and West Virginia, all the way in over there towards parts of Maine. In fact, as you come out of New York into parts of Vermont and New Hampshire, as well as Western Massachusetts, this is where we could have quite an elevated tornado threat as well as some, with the damaging wind potential here in this region on Sunday afternoon and evening. So that's something to watch, but that kind of gets out of here quickly going towards Monday. That front is offshore other than some scattered shadows hours in parts of Maine and Vermont, New Hampshire behind the low Monday evening. But look at this. We're going to turn our attention to our next system that's going to carry us through a lot of the week here, just getting its feet on the ground here in parts of North Dakota. South Dakota as well, the eastern parts of those two states coming into Minnesota as well as parts of Wisconsin. A new low pressure system, a clean slate out ahead of it with some warmer and moist air trying to make its way on up here into this region. It is going to be a focused pocket of moist air to start with on the week here, but by the time we get towards our Tuesday, those severe storms that we could have seen in parts of the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Wisconsin on Monday, that area will broaden out a little bit more and it's shift to the southeast by Tuesday. You see that low pressure system here in eastern Michigan. The GFS and the European model agree that somewhere around the Michigan area is where we're going to have that low pressure system regardless of where these storms fire on up. Anywhere from around Michigan and Ohio all the way back here towards Nebraska and Kansas, this is that area where we're going to have that moisture in place, the ingredients, the jet streams kicking in. This is where you'll definitely have to watch in if you live in any of those areas for some isolated to maybe even scattered severe storms, depending on the way things shape up with some of those specific ingredients as we get a little bit closer in time to this event. Continuing to play this low pressure out as we head towards Wednesday, a lot of the energy is going to move up into that main vicinity once again. We might have some individual areas of low pressure extending back down towards the mid-Atlantic out of this as well. But with all this energy, with a strong cold front, this one's going to produce a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity in some spots that haven't seen it in quite a while. Some parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, down here into the Mid-South as well. These spots, not much shower and thunderstorm coverage recently. Definitely really filling in here by the time we head towards our Wednesday afternoon, as well as in some parts of the Ohio Valley and Northeast, where again, some of these storms could be severe, given the ingredients. And again, I'll talk a little bit more in-depth about this a little bit deep further into the video here. Believe it or not, Wednesday afternoon and Thursday afternoon are actually in a little bit more agreement with the GFS and the European model than with Tuesday afternoon severe weather threat. So we'll keep an eye on Tuesdays, but obviously you're focusing on Thursdays. These two areas I just circled, the southeast U.S. where we've got that lingering front, and then back on here coming out of the Mountain West and into some parts of the plains. This is where we'll be at least watching some general showers and thunderstorms. There probably won't be extremely uh, high amounts of severe weather coming out of Thursday, but we'll see because some parts of Nebraska looking a little bit iffy there in terms of the storm. So it could turn out to be a severe weather day, especially if we get stronger low pressure, like what's going to likely begin to form here in southern Canada down towards parts of Kansas by Friday. Look at this. This is the European model. The GFS model actually almost shows the exact same picture for Friday afternoon. Some strong to severe storms possible later in the day, moving out of what's left of the storms from Thursday night, heading on up here into the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes region later on the day Friday with that counterclockwise flow bringing up the moisture. So we'll see what happens out of that. But let's jump over now and look at the mid-level jet stream. This is 15 to 20,000 feet on up there into the atmosphere at that 500 millibar level here. We're using the GFS model, but the European model looks very similar similar to this. The features are likely going to be in similar locations here between the two models. They do agree on that, and that's good news that they at least indicate that systems are going to be in designated locations. Precip's a little bit more uncertain as we were just talking about there, though. Here we go late Sunday. This is where the severe weather threat is going to be in parts of Maine, back on down through at least some parts of the Ohio Valley at the minimum, as far back towards the southwest as Arkansas. And again, I'll show you the exact zones of severe weather here in a second. 
Then we'll turn our attention at once that begins to head offshore back to the west for Monday. And this is that piece of energy, as I said about two to three minutes ago, this is that one that's going to carry us all the way through a lot of this upcoming week and keep things active. It's the main focus of the severe weather topic in this video. Coming out of Montana into the Dakotas and Minnesota, that's where this energy will be. On the underside of that piece of energy, that's where especially we'll be watching those storms. So Minnesota looks like a target area of storms Monday. The Storm Prediction Center already designating an area there anyway. By the time we head towards our Tuesday, look where the strongest energy is likely to be. The European model doesn't show quite as strong of a system as the GFS does here, but you get the point. Right under this energy that's likely going to be stretched somewhere from Minnesota into parts of the upper peninsula of Michigan, we'll be watching the severe weather threat. So a couple hundred miles south of that, from Nebraska to Iowa to parts of Illinois, northern Indiana, as well as Michigan and Ohio, that's probably where we'll be watching some form of threat. I think, you know, Iowa and into Illinois is going to be really the focal point for that. This area that I'm circling should look really familiar by the time we head towards late Wednesday, June 26th, heading into the early Thursday, June 27th time frame because it is very similar to the severe weather setup with a front that we're seeing Sunday, June 23rd. So just a few days later, we've got a very similar setup. This one's going to be a little bit more potent in a broader sense, though, and that's why we'll have the front extend all the way down there towards parts of Mississippi and northern Louisiana with at least some isolated severe weather along it from there to the northeast probably Wednesday afternoon. Then while we could still see some severe weather trying to wrap up in the southeast on Thursday, if we do see any you know storm energy to support that, it'll probably be back on off here into the mountain west that we'll be beginning to focus on as a trough comes out of there and into the north central plains to support our next severe weather event at the end of next week that I was showing you on the precipitation tracker just a little bit ago. Now here we go towards the dew points. This is what shows your moisture content. Anything that's getting into the 50s and 60s is supportive enough for severe weather, but these deeper oranges that you see up here in parts of the upper Midwest and again focused on Minnesota where I think the threat will be highest on Monday. This is where you've got that increased moisture You've got that buoyancy in the atmosphere really supporting some of that severe weather. These dew points are in the 70s, even coming out of the Dakotas there and towards parts of Wisconsin and Iowa. So this is that spot where you definitely have all the ingredients in place in the overlap with the jet stream and the precip for those storms Monday. Now here we go towards Tuesday. Look at the broad area of moisture that you got. As long as you get the storms to fire on up in any of these spots, you've got the moisture, you've got the jet stream in favor. So once we get the short range models, and that's when we'll know a little bit more about exact placement of storms. But keep in mind, in any of those areas I just circled with the moisture Tuesday, and any of these areas I'm circling with the moisture in place on Wednesday, these are locations that... Once the jet stream and some of that precipitation actually finds its way into your area, you could certainly see the severe storm potential. And that's what we're going to talk about day by day here with where I think the risk zones are going to be right now with the ONW severe scale. This scale is what I'm going to use for Sunday and Monday severe weather risk. And then we'll use the severe zones graphic, which I'll show you in a minute for Tuesday through Thursday. We're going to use ones, twos, and threes here for Sunday and Monday's threats. One is for low certainty, but with a few severe storms possible. Two is isolated severe weather. Three on my scale that goes up to seven. That means that we have scattered severe weather likely with potentially all hazards. And I do think scattered severe weather is likely here, especially where the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted from parts of Pennsylvania and the central areas of it on out there towards far southwestern Maine Sunday. There will be a focal point where I almost put a four down there in southern Vermont, southern New Hampshire, and western Massachusetts that's coming out of New York as well, where we could see that increased threat for tornadoes. This is going to be mainly a damaging wind and tornado kind of event here, but we could see some one-inch hail in isolated spots as well. Certainly something to watch is, again, scattered severe storms with the potential for damaging winds of 55 to 70 miles per hour, and spotty tornadoes are expected from especially Pennsylvania to southern Maine Sunday. Jump into Monday now. This is when we're going to have that shield of severe weather, primarily in the north central plains and the upper Midwest, coming out of the Dakotas and at northeast Nebraska. The NAM model already hinting that a lot of those storms are going to be in Minnesota. I think the ingredients look most prominent over Minnesota. The Storm Prediction Center agrees. So definitely already have a three of seven in that zone. Stay tuned for a potential upgrade or expansion of some of those zones in the future. Then that severe zones graphic is what we're using for Tuesday through Thursday. And what this shows is where I think the highest confidence and where I would have a level two of seven on the ONW severe scale will be. And as we go towards Tuesday, June 25th of 2024, I think at the minimum, some areas from at least northwestern Ohio and parts of most of Michigan, honestly, all the way back there towards parts of Kansas, this whole zone in yellow, likely some isolated severe weather at the minimum on Tuesday there. And again, there will probably be some more focused spots for those storms. And not only Tuesday, but also Wednesday here when the storm threat will likely be shifting eastward along that front from parts of Maine back down towards Arkansas. And then as we jump towards our Thursday, the areas where I would focus for a level two of seven on the ONW severe scale. Again, these are just my preliminary thoughts. They're not exact. Risk could go up or down from here. 
from parts of South Carolina down to Mississippi and the southern parts of those states, and then on up there in the north central plains with that new event. This is where we'll be probably watching the storms Thursday. And of course, we'll continue to watch storms from there. This is just as far as my outlooks go. But what I'm circling on screen at this point is where we've got rainfall just in the next 24 to 36 hours from when I'm filming this video. This is from late Saturday through early Monday, so late June 22nd through early June 24th. And you can see showers and storms ongoing with that front are going to be the heaviest in parts of Iowa, southern Wisconsin, and parts of northern Illinois, all the way over there to Maine. Some of these localized totals where you're seeing the yellows and oranges and reds, we could get up to two to four inches of rain, and there will be some scattered flooding that could ensue as a result of that. Make sure if you're in those heavier rain communities that you're staying alert for that. But the reason I really show the precipitation is the fact that the Weather Prediction Center is showing a lot of areas here in the Mid-South, the Southeast, the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, all these locations, even the Mid-Atlantic, picking up at least a quarter of an inch by the end of the week. That is a good sign. We do need some rainfall, especially if it could come without severe weather in some of these locations. And this isn't enough to cause flooding either, especially if those totals stay around an inch or just less. So I'll keep an eye on it, but it looks like most areas will be getting beneficial rain this week as opposed to, you know, dangerous flooding rains. The further north you go, that that's where the rains could cause flooding. Let's take a look at the temperature anomalies here using our European ensembles. A collection of models averaged out to show you that Sunday, June 23rd of 2024 in the afternoon, we're going to be at least 10 degrees above average here from Alabama to New York City. Shifting our focus to the temperatures in the western United States, this is where we've got a dominant ridge now building into the early part of next week, and you'll already be feeling the effects, especially if you live in Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming on Sunday, where temperatures could be as much as 25 degrees above average. According to this average set of models, there are definitely some outliers that think you could be even hotter than 25 degrees above normal. But by the time we get towards Tuesday, just note how warm it is over a lot of the country. It is summer. It's supposed to be hot, but this is even hotter than normal in these areas I'm circling on screen. So the focus pocket from the Mid-South to the Midwest, as well as this pocket coming out of the High Plains back towards the Mountain West. These are prominent spots where it's going to be the hottest through the early part of this week. Keeping it hot in a lot of these same zones through Wednesday and into Thursday. But what we will notice on Wednesday heading into Thursday is a little bit of a cool down. Models have actually backed off since my video yesterday on this cool down. But from Minnesota and Iowa all the way over there towards Maine, I think you can expect to feel a little bit of relief. Definitely some lower humidity. That could The lower humidity could even expand a little bit further south. Expect that to happen Wednesday into Thursday, maybe even into Friday, the further east you go, as that front will still be moving on through. Now, here we go towards Saturday. Behind all these systems that have kept it active all week long, look at what it ends up with. We still have ridging that's going to build eastward, and in fact, this could be our next real heat wave for a lot of the east if the models continue to uptrend on this with 10 to 15 degree above average temperatures. Already likely from, say, Texas all the way up there towards Indiana and Ohio next weekend. Let's run through the shorter term exact temperatures, though. You see these boxes here in the highs for our Sunday, June 23rd. In the mid-Atlantic, parts of Washington, D.C., surrounding spots to New York City. With that southerly flow that's bringing the severe weather in nearby areas as well, that's going to keep it into the mid to upper 90s, breaking some records there. Plenty of mid and upper 90s here as well. This is a focus pocket where we could try to make a run for 100 degrees Sunday afternoon down there where I just had circled. And then this whole western area, especially the closer you go to the southwestern border there with Mexico and Baja California, that's where we'll be near 110 plus in some locations. Now, Monday afternoon, we're seeing that heat. Remember, it's going to build to a lot of the U.S. by Monday into Tuesday here. Triple digits in some spots of, in fact, a lot of Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska Monday afternoon. Still hanging on to a lot of these mid and upper 90s here for the southeast as well. This will include some parts of Florida. Make sure to drink plenty of water if you have to be outside. If you have to be inside, that is a much better option if you have a way to be inside, I should say. In the southwest, still very hot Monday afternoon. We don't see much of a shift to Tuesday afternoon, except for the fact that more of these areas get included in the heat. This is where that anomalous patch was when I showed you the ensembles. Uh, from Missouri and Illinois to Indiana, all the way down there to the Gulf Coast, at least mid-90s. This will come with a little bit of humidity that will make it feel hotter, too. Look at that Nashville, Tennessee, 101 degrees. Goodness, that's not going to feel great, especially if you're out there on the streets, because the temperatures out there when you're on the concrete or the asphalt, they just feel 10 times hotter, it seems like. And that's not much of an exaggeration, because that definitely is an urban heat island that can occur when you're on those harder surfaces and parking lots, etc., so make sure you're trying to beat the heat. Stay indoors. If you don't have air conditioning, try to find a place that has it for free. Look at that. We're cooling down where I had it circled uh, up there in the Great Lakes and Midwest on Wednesday. And in fact, 
Midwest. We continue to see parts, parts of the Midwest, Great Lakes and Ohio Valley cool down into Thursday. We've got 70s and 80s with lower humidity. That's manageable up there. But south of this line I just drew, it is just going to remain a pretty dang unbearable on Thursday and even towards the back half of the week from the southwest to the southeast in the United States. So that's it with our temperatures. I talked a little bit more in depth about those in the last video if you want to subscribe to the channel if you're not already and go check that out. But anyway, Tropics Topics for today. I normally do a segment on Tropics Topics in every video. Don't really have much to talk about today other than there will be a little bit of heavy precip in South Central Texas from an Invest 93L that's near the same areas where Tropical Storm Alberto already made landfall a few days ago. All of that is just some rain. We're not going to see any development out of that likely at this point, and that's the good news. So I don't have much to talk about in the tropics. Again, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Anybody can make sure that they have the bell icon clicked as well so you always get notified when I post. That's it for this video. I'll probably see you back right here on Monday with a new one. One Nation Weather.